Okay, let's have some quirky fun now. Everything so far has been based on the story of circulometry, with the sun rising in the east and following circular motion as it goes up above us, settles down in the west, continues on a circular motion during the night time, allegedly, to rise again in the east uh, the next day and keep following the circular motion. All right, so that led to the story of circulometry and trigonometry and all the rest. But just for fun, Imagine instead the, the sun didn't follow a circular path as it went from east to west and around again. It actually followed instead a square path, which I know is not physically possible. I'm just being quirky. In fact, in some sense, I'll call this a square of radius one. I, I know that, you know, the center's here, but the radius keeps changing, but out to one, east, up one, left one, down one, and so on. So we're going to imagine, again, the sun rising in the east, but it now follows this path at different angles of elevation as it goes around its journey. So here we'll have the sun at some angle of elevation x. And like I did before, I want to know the height of the sun at that angle of elevation and the orbit of the sun, but now the sun is following a square path. So instead of calling the sine, I'll call this square sine, squine, the squine of the angle x. I'll call this openness, the companion to squine, cosquine of x. So I can define squine and cosquine to be the height and the overness of the sun following a square path. Whoa, just fun. And my challenge now is, could I actually now plot a graph of y equals squine of x? Well, the answer is yes, we can. Of course we'll do it. We'll, we'll have fun with it. We'll try to figure it out. Might be tricky, but we'll give it a go. Um, so, okay, so I can I get some easy data points. So, um, some easy data points would be, for example, always when the sun's just rising. Sun has an angle elevation of zero. It's right there on the horizon. It has height of zero. So, zero equals squine of zero. Squine of zero, the height at zero is zero. Bingo. The point zero, zero is part of that data set. Um, as the angle of elevation increases and the sun rises, um, I guess they're, they're hard to work at those heights, but this one is the next easiest one for my brain to handle. As soon as I get to a height of, uh, angle of elevation of 45 degrees, I know I'm at a height of 1. So at 45 degrees, we're at a height of 1. Okay. In fact, at 46 degrees, a height of 1. 47 degrees, a height of 1. Height of 80 degrees, at 80 degrees, 1. 90 degrees, height of 1. 100 degrees, height of 1. 120 degrees, height of 1. Um, 120, is that right? No. So 45, uh, 90, 90 plus another 45. 135, yeah, up to 135 degrees, we're still height 1. So 45 degrees to 135 degrees to 135, halfway there, we're still at height 1. So it's always height 1 between 45 and 135. Okay, I'm starting to pop my graph. Great. And then it comes the sort of scary part between uh, 135 and 180, the height's going down. So the height's going down. At 180, the height is zero. The sun is right on the um, western horizon. And then the height keeps going down for a while. And I see this is the next easy angle to work out. That's uh, 180, well, 45, 225 degrees. There, it's at height uh, negative one. Negative one. And the height stays negative one all the way up to this angle, which is what, 315 degrees? Height negative one for a while, and then it keep, then the height, the height of the sun starts rising back to zero degrees at 360. And I guess the same thing if we go to the negative angles and all the rest. All right, so there's a structure of the graph. I've got these points. Maybe we'll do them in pink so we can really see them. That one, a range of one back to zero, a range of negative one back to zero. So now comes the tricky question. What's going on at these in-between parts between 0 and 45, between 135 and 180, between 180 and 220 and so forth? I guess they're probably all basically the same structure. So, but what is that structure? I mean, it's tempting to say, could it just be a straight line? Maybe it's just a straight line up, because it looks pretty sort of linear there. Or maybe it's a line that bulges. Maybe it's more like this. Or maybe it bulges the other way, getting smudgy here. Or maybe bolt is like you know, a double S bend sort of thing. Or maybe it does something like, I don't know, well, not very good. But you see what I'm trying to do. So there's a challenge. There's a challenge. What is the graph actually doing at these little in-between parts? Let's go from 0 up to height 1, from 1 back down to height 0, height 0 down to negative 1, and so on. Now, if you want to try to figure that out, figure it out. Pause the video right now. Because I'm about to give the answer away. If you actually start maybe actually measuring points, and actually, you know what, you could really just physically do this, get out a protractor, different angles, and actually get out a rule and measure that height, you will see you get a curve that actually bulges like that. And then it bulges down this way, but to 180, same thing, just like, you know, the, the negative, the coming down version of that. And that does the same thing again, down to what, negative numbers, and so on. So you actually get a graph that looks like that. Welcome to the y equals squine of x. All right, 
here's a couple of challenges. What's the graph of cosine of x? It's probably the same graph, but it's just shifted by 90 degrees like we had before for sine and cosine. Can you actually get the graph of cosine of x now? Um, another question. I bet you could actually get a formula for that curve. Can you get a formula for that bit, bit of the picture? I bet you could do it. I bet you could do it. It might take some thinking. You might have to go mulling. You might have to like go for a walk for a while or something like that. But I bet you guys should tell me what that curve, section of curve actually is. Great. And best of all, if you want a real challenge, okay, I wonder what the graph of squine over cosquine. That is, I want to know what is the graph of y equals tank of x? The tangent version, sine over cosine. Now it's going to be tank of x is squine over cosquine. What's the graph of the tank graph? Whoa, the tank function. Wow. Wow. Okay, just having quirky fun. And of course, you can invent your other types of squines and cosquines. What if I did a, a square that was actually in a diamond shape? There's another version of squine and cosquine. What does its graph look like? Or you could do maybe I don't know, hexagonal sine and cosine or pentagonal sine and cosine. I bet you could actually create all different versions of sines and cosines. And what if they all have kind of very similar structure? And the more and more sides you do, the more circular it's going to look. I guess all those pictures would converge to the familiar sine graph in the end as you do more and more and more and more and more sides. Interesting stuff. Lots of fun. Just play with. Just, just play.